Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all fandoms, welcome to the Ferret and Raccoon podcast, episode 87. I am Ace. And I'm the Angry Raccoon. And we've hit the uh, end of April at the moment. Basic, technically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this goes up, yeah, 30th. 30th. Yeah, so uh, almost there in May, it's about the, a quarter of the year's over. A third, no, a third of the year's over, I think. Way over a third, I yeah. think. Which um, it's kind of frighteningly moved fast. Unfortunately, but I think it's also been somewhat good in that respect because yeah. we've been entertained quite well we really have there's been a lot going on and hopefully these podcasts have been quite entertaining and helped in the i guess move of the year yeah um a, a lot's happened so it's Too always much. good to enjoy yourselves every once in a while i think so but um i think uh, one of the things we should start off is uh how have you been past uh two weeks i've been tired Tight. Okay, okay. I've been tired because the first and the major thing I was doing was making sure that my Japan video was put up on uh, yes. my new channel or second channel or however you want to phrase it, being re- being Ruben behind the camera, which is where I'm going to put a lot of my other personal work up there, including travel videos and other film-based documentary stuff. So right there on that channel is my Japan video in which I went to Japan for roughly about a week um in february so if you i'm actually going to put that in the uh, download link and the description definitely um, i'll put it just under well in the description i'll put it just under the video of the episode because um yeah because i know some people might want to see that because it's not on this channel because there is going to be a bit of a shift so that's been taken care of the other major thing for me to worry about was record store day 2018 uh, yeah. which took place on the 21st of april um, where I went, which was Soho in London, I mm. was kind of surprised by the fact that it felt like a smaller turnout. Really? Yeah, there wasn't wow. any real event like they've had previous times where like the BBC was here and some bands are playing and they had entertainment there while people waited. I think that might have been due to the fact that there was um, roadworks going on there, uh, okay. so the place looked kind of ugly. Yeah. But um, I went there. I just managed to get. I managed to get five out of six things. Which is good. I'm okay. not going to list everything here, but the main two things that I kind of wanted to get was the uh, Mac DeMarco, mm. This Old Dog Demos okay. uh, vinyl, which I did manage to get nice. by the time I got in line and got my hands on it. It was the last copy at the show I went there. So wow. I was just in time. The luck. <laughs> basically. And the other thing I majorly wanted well, um, was the Cure Mixed Up um yep. Uh, vinyl didn't manage to get the mixed up vinyl but i did manage to get the torn down okay, one, which okay. is kind of like the sequel new release remaster yeah. kind of in the same vein picture disc of it so you know that's where the five out of six comes from but i'm still happy with what i got i'm not going to mention the other things because yeah. no, I'm not, we're not going to be here all day but i did manage to get some other things watched and taken care of like um i finally managed to finish um uh, I don't know why I'm forgetting of the name. Devil Man Cry Baby. Nice. For whatever reason. And um, i got to say, um, slightly underwhelmed by it, to be honest. Okay. It's an interesting response. There. Yeah, compared to everyone else who yeah. thinks it's um, uh, Lord and Saviour returned. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, like, I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah. It is certainly not bad. I just think it was okay. Okay, fair um, I think a lot of the decisions that were made in the series and a lot of the things that happened, I was questioning i think it got very messy towards the end right even to the point of me completely disregarding the final episode as far as i'm concerned the series ends on episode nine wow i loved the last episode i did not okay i thought it was an extremely weak ending to the series i found it like really anarchic and it worked perfectly in that way i i wasn't getting any of that compared to other things i've seen outside and within yeah. devil man Cry- devil man the series i was kind of like uh, it, it kind of felt very rushed Fair to honestly it. like yeah. it, it kind of like without spoiling anything given how episode nine ends mm. and how episode 10 ends it kind of feels like ep- 10 episodes was set from the very beginning right and they kind of finished episode nine and went right we still have an episode to go okay okay um i think if they had changed a certain character's motives and what a certain character is, I mm. think you could have had a much stronger ending because as much as I think that was a great, I think in terms of the way the series ends, I think it was just a bit limp. 
Right, honestly. okay, okay. Um, but that is not me saying it's a bad yeah. show. I still think it's a pretty good show. It has a lot of fantastic elements to yeah. it. And I think it's definitely one of the strongest things to act- to be released this year, simply okay. put. But I just think a little bit underwhelming. Um, one thing that was not underwhelming, the last major thing I managed to finish was Pop Team Epic. Okay. Which was a, um, a surreal and crazy um, joyride around yes. pop culture and anime. Uh, which culminates in probably one of the most fantastic, m- most fantastical things I've seen in a f- good few years. I've not really seen anything go to this length to, I guess, be as crazy or as original uh, or be as rudimentary or yeah. as confusing as this series. But it is a fantastic <laughs> series. So far, it's 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 up there as one of my picks for best things so far. I, I really enjoyed okay. this. Um, it's although this is kind of like an overplayed kind of term. Yeah. This this series has a lot of layers and it's really deep. <laughs> and I know you're gonna look at the images of this and go, no, this is a this is a this is a stupid meme parody well, anime. The, that's the surface view. That that's what all the the, the normies and low tier people. And that's what the series yeah. wants you to think. If exactly. you if you read behind if you read between the lines, you'll see that um, even the dumbest yeah. and the most nonsensical things have deeper meanings and a lot of care this is a very well crafted it is. series big time and like i said you'll probably look at it and you'll go no it's not <laughs> but um if you actually look at it you will understand compared to other things which people are saying is deep mm. like you know like j cole and <laughs> <laughs> oh. and darling in the frank shots fired um no kod is a rubbish album guys <laughs> yeah um uh yeah, there's there's a lot more here to be found. And speaking of Darling in the Franks, yeah, e- episode 14 of Darling in the Franks has killed the series for me. <laughs> Simply put. You're trash. It's killed it for me. <laughs> so uh, I, I, yeah, don't expect any kind of, like, um, praise yeah, regarding yeah. that series. But Ace, how have you been? What have you been up to? I, I've been similarly tired. Um, I've had a lot of family over and it's still continuing, which... Um, isn't the best for me. Mm. Uh, mainly being uh, hidden in my room, sitting in the corner writing emo poetry. <laughs> Not really. Haven't been doing that for the last five years, you know. I've grown up from Thank that. Goodness. But uh, I did manage to watch a few things and I actually went out to cinema again because oh, okay. I, I kind of need to do that. Mm. But the first thing I, I have to talk about, which was um, kind of a few days ago, being the greatest Royal Rumble... The uh, oh, okay. w- yeah. WWE's okay, uh, pay per view in uh, Saudi Arabia, which is the first of its kind, five hours long, which it was essentially a mixture of WrestleMania and Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. but it had absolutely no weight to it because nothing changed. Mm. <laughs> um, it was mostly bland, but the the highlight of the show, and even Raccoon knows this highlight, and it was a uh, Titus O'Neil, Titus Worldwide himself fumbling so hard on his way to the rumble that he slid under the ring through the apron it was staggeringly amazing um the thing is first time it happens you don't see it properly you just see him get out from under the apron and get in the ring and you just hear the announcers laughing their heads off and they replay it four fucking times rightfully so (sighs) my throat was sore from laughing at this, it was incredible. I've I've had this video on repeat. It's, I think even with like, oh my god, it's it's such an amazing clip. It really is. Um, and I mean, it's not the first time he's fumbled on his way to the ring though. Um, oh one time during the uh, classic NXT, which was more of a joke game show thing, he fumbled on his way walking around the ring holding a keg of beer, and it was embarrassing. He should change his name to Butterfingers. <laughs> it really should. Mm. But uh, that was probably the highlight of the show. Uh, you had some other cool random things like a uh, Sumo being in the Rumble. Interesting. Random but great. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, it, it wasn't the best show. Really kind of bland. And we, I've almost seen everything that happened there. The only interesting thing, 50 Man more Rumble. Okay. I'd like to see more of that. Or put yeah. it in the next SmackDown game. Yeah, why not? But uh, next thing that I, I think is really good and incredibly overlooked, I think it came out in 2013, being an anime called C, The Money of Soul and... Con- um, sorry, I fumbled that line. C, The um, con- C, the Money of Soul and 
possibility control. That's it. Yeah. It's a very long, weird thing. Yeah. Um, or you can just call it C. Yeah. As it's just called C sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it is very, very interesting anime closest to Persona I've seen in anime form. Yeah. Even more than Persona. Mm. Um, and it deals with economics and political money control. Boring. But it does it so fascinating. And it's even ahead of its time. Because the currency used feels like a magical version of Bitcoin. Mm. And how it fucks up economies. And it's amazing. I was shocked by how... And it's only 11 episodes long. Mm. It's fantastic. I highly recommend everyone go watch it. And there's this uh, really incredible designs. One character who looks like an Oni. Mm. And she's got red and white kind of striped hawk. Yeah. Which I think you sent me an image of her. Yeah. Back, like, ages ago. Mm-hmm. She's from that anime and she's great. Everything in the show is cool. Mm-hmm. I... Please watch this. It needs its love. It really does. Hopefully it does get it. I, maybe a DVD release might help that yeah. if it hasn't already been. Or I, I need a Blu-ray of this. I need my Blu-ray. It's um, it's not on my favourites, but it's high up there. Okay. If it got a second season, it'd probably be there. If it continued that strong. We'll see. Yeah. And um, lastly, I went to see um, the biggest crossover in cinematic history. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Yes. No. Back in cinemas. Exactly. <laughs> For uh, showing every hour. Mm, yes. No, but I, I saw Avengers Infinity War is literally being shown every hour in most cinemas, which mm. is ridiculous. A bit much. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It was fast-paced, fun action. I mean, there's not really much depth to it. You wouldn't expect it. It's basically just action for two hours and 30 minutes. Um you get all the characters in there with appropriate amount of time. It's probably dumb blockbuster, but I, f- I had fun. That's okay. about it. I'm not going to say it's deep or anything. The closest you could say is people's egos cause them to fuck up, which works and makes sense. Wait, so Paul Feige makes an appearance in the film? <laughs> no, Kathleen Kennedy. Oh. <laughs> but, um, yeah... I uh, liked it. Some of the VFX, though, look a bit dodgy at points. I'm like, what the fuck happened here? This happens when you rush your film. Yeah, I mean, there's one scene where you just see, like, um, uh, the Hulkbuster suit and, like, the person inside it. And it looks dodgy as hell in the background. I don't think they wanted you to look at it, but I was, and I was like, mate, what are you doing? <laughs> you what, mate? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I enjoyed it. There, there were some good moments, some nice little highlights, and every character feels like the character from previous ones. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, um, it's not going to be one of the greatest films ever. It's just a fun crossover. Mm. Yeah, so, fanboys, stop. Big critics, like, you're not being smart by saying it's dumb fun. That's obvious. No, you're not really saying anything by acknowledging what this film is. Yeah. Like we all know what it is. If you if you don't, then exactly, I, gu- I guess you you're just part of the problem to yeah. some extent. But whatever. How about um, talk about the films you want to? I mean, um, er- everyone's gonna forget about it when the actual biggest film of the year comes out, being uh, Ant Man and Wasp, because oh, you know yeah. that is that is the real killer. It's uh, the killer wasp. <laughs> yeah, it's that that like I mean, people are saying Infinity War is gonna like top Avatar for greatest. No, no, Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh, Three billion worldwide. Predicting it now. Just like Ready Player One. Yes. Three it's, billion. It's close. It's close. It's just about to hit two billion because that film was so good. Uh, Twelve minutes of live action. I'm I'm okay. I I'm never gonna rewatch that film. No. I don't need to. No, the the, the film that tried to raise the popularity of VR but simultaneously killed popularity of VR. I, I hope it did. If it, in if it one has day. any legacy, I hope the legacy is that it kills VR. Hope, yeah, hopefully VR just dies here. If you're not going to do it, VR doesn't belong with gaming. VR belongs with education. Yeah, exactly. Education, uh, communication. There. That's what I would say, yeah. but whatever. If you want to keep pushing the toys because you don't want to tell your consumers that the game industry is not doing that well, then mm. fine. With AAA is on. It's doing oh, terribly. Just... You know, just Oh, we just raise that by ten pounds. That'll that'll make up for loss. <laughs> Don't worry, video games will get more expensive, and it's, it's not that we're just pushing too much money into making it look expensive. Business, yeah. <laughs> business talk. Um, but yeah, 
Crazy. Anything else? That that was me for the last few weeks. Fair enough. Um, speaking of the last two weeks, it's been quite crazy this fortnight. Yes. I don't know what the hell has been going on, but we have so many ups and downs, and I don't know what's going on. It's been hard to keep up with things, and it's made me even more tired. I think um, the the Hinazawa syndrome has hit everyone. It's possibly. not just located in a small town now. No, it, it's not worldwide. And I, and I think the first thing we need to talk about is the fact that we had some unfortunate like recent passings over the last like two weeks. Um, the first one, I think most people might not be uh, well internationally most people yep. might not be familiar with him but um Dale Winton who was a um, British presenter unfortunately passed away aged 62 which was quite crazy because I as he's most known to be known for used to watch supermarket sweep same yeah. every day no matter what and I think even when he was presenting other shows like Hole in the Wall and mm. you know he was a great host and he had such a great personality and it's a shame that he um has passed away so young. And I would say to all of our international listeners, definitely look up those shows. Definitely, cause, um, yeah. Especially Supermarket Sweet. That's a real blast from the past. And I don't know... It really is. Like, it's a dream come true for literally anyone <laughs> and um, quite the topical thing, I guess yeah, you could say, to some yeah. extent. I mean, I've just recently... Especially recent... when Black Friday comes up, it's always topical. Yeah, and especially as soon as two of our biggest, like, uh, supermarkets are possibly going oh, to merge. God, that's just yeah. recently come up. Who knows if it happens, I don't care, but yeah. um, we'll see. Um, next, probably one of the most surprising things, no, shocking, I would yeah. actually say, would be um, Avicii, the uh, Swedish uh, DJ EDM producer, um, passed away at age 28, mm. which is... I, I when I first saw this, I thought this was fake. Yeah, I thought this was fake information. I was like, no, it's not. No, it can't be happened. But apparently, unfortunately, so. Um, yeah, especially because there's the whole thing of like the 27 club of like musicians who have died at age 27. Mm. I thought it was someone just making a joke thing related to that. Yeah, which it's mm. really sad to hear this. Yeah, it is sad. I mean, I don't like EDM like music, yeah. but I think. Of all the artists I know who make that kind of music, he definitely seemed like a really cool dude. Mm. Just like his presence and the way he kind of was, like that. Like he didn't he, he didn't seem to like live through his music or think he was that big of a deal. Yeah. Despite the fact he was a big deal, he seemed like just a guy, which I guess which is why it's even more heartbreaking that he's passed away unfortunately. Mm. And the uh, final one unfortunately was being Vern Troyer, who I think is quite the underrated actor. I think definitely. most people know him from the Austin Powers films, yeah. playing Mini Me. Um, but I think if you look deeper at his roles, he actually has some interesting, like, like performances mm. he's done over the time. And I did have a look. Like, he was in, like, Men in Black. Yeah. Um, Three in Loving Las Vegas. He was in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Mm. Um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Um, obviously, I think slightly more older kids might know him from the Celebrity Big Brother, the, the series that ran in 2009, mm. to which he was... He was going all over the place and Trailer Park Boys which is a very underrated yeah, TV series I need to jump on that so on like it's what the 36th season oh, or something like that they're all on Netflix I think yeah which is never catch up yeah get on Trailer Park Boys <laughs> but yeah um, it's really unfortunate to hear those kind of almost unfortunate news kind of regarding our education system is the fact that they are the, edu- the schools are said to like remove analog clocks because yeah. I guess Children can't read analog clocks, which I guess for those of you who can't read analog clocks, I'll explain what it is. It's basically the round clock. <laughs> the round clock. Uh, yeah. That has the numbers. Yeah. Only, yeah, only it has 12 the hands numbers. and yeah. they point. It has the three hands, the big yeah. hand, the little hand, and the uh, minute hand. And it tells it the, second the time. Hand? I call it the minute hand. Okay. Or the second hand or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the idea of being over the age of 10 and not being able to look at a clock and know what time it is yeah is really shocking as it feels like society society has failed in a way yeah i mean i i understand it from like both points of view i mean there has been a rise in technology in which all the times on those are shown in digital but if the issue is they only know it through that why don't you just put both clocks together you have a digital one and an analog so they can show what means what to learn or teach both yeah it's not going to take that long it's it's not as if it's not as hard well look, obviously no people won't regard that as hard but it's not as trialing as knowing all your times tables yeah you know what i mean or in the periodic s- table yeah in school you probably spend a good few weeks learning all the times tables if yeah. you can even manage that 
Just like teach the clock when they're in nursery and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew how to tell time from when I was five, and yeah. I think it's rather disappointing, and I think it, some of the blame can be put on, like, laziness. Granted, from kids, because I think yeah. they spend way too much time on their phone, and I, I think it's also because they have actual no concept of time. Yeah. I think they legit just look at their phone, and they kind of just go, oh. Yeah. And, or they just look outside and they go, it's getting late. Yeah. Like, I don't think they know, have any kind of concept of time. I think they are only ever told time. They can't uh, tell it, which is quite sad because at the end of the day, me and you are more superior than them because we can tell two <laughs> kinds of time as opposed to one. Oh, I, I love that. That's the objective fact of But today. I could say that. We're superior because we know our dollar clock. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm having that on my tombstone when I die. That, that's that's how you defeat teenagers today. You just show them. You just show them the round clock. Okay. Just I'm from now on. I'm getting a necklace with an analog clock on it. That's my superpower. I'm For, scaring those teens. Well, flavor Flav, you have to remember. I know he's gonna like. I'm gonna have a picture of him on the back of my jacket. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's to protect my back. <laughs> Fair enough. But I mean, yeah, obviously, like you mentioned, technology is a big part of it. But I yeah. still think that um, I think a large majority of children should really know how to do it. I yeah. mean, I mean, I think pe- I think not in a mean way. I think if the school isn't going to do it, because just like yeah. moving on isn't going to help. Because all we know is there could be another form of telling the time come around. And then what? There's two arts lost right yeah. there. I think parents and school should really just step up instead of like just kind of going, oh, they can't do it. So let's pass it on. I yeah. Mean, it's no one's real fault. The children should know how to do this, and I think we should have kids do it. I, th- I just find it so weird, mm. and this story. It's one of those things of when you get into certain like um, certain industries, you sometimes you actually have to learn older formats before using the new stuff. Exactly. Which, it's just kind of one of those generation things. It will get harder as time goes on, but it's at least good to keep it known. Exactly. I mean, it's not as useless as Latin, you know what I mean? I, I still love Latin because I find etymology fascinating. But it's still yeah. useless in current time. Like, yeah. Time will always be present as long as time still ticks. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's kind of stupid. Yeah. Oh, speaking of stupid. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know what the hell is going on with Kanye West right now. <laughs> like. Brilliant. Him saying dumb things on Twitter isn't anything new. No, it's been happening for absolutely ages. But, I mean, he's... But I mean, he's literally kind of becoming the definition more recently of talking loud but saying nothing. Yeah. And this this stuff, which I don't even really understand, has certainly come out the blue. Like he's raving about how his like manga hat has yeah. been signed and <laughs> and how he loves a uh, Candice Owen, which is like, oh, like she's not smart. I don't know what is going on. Like, is he having a mental breakdown or is this some kind of deluded way to promote his not good album coming out? I think it's his ego getting the better of him again. Again, yeah. Like it always does. And because, you know, Donald Trump is one of the other biggest egotistical people in the world, he's like joining forces, the ego. It's... uh, I don't get it. Like, you have to be dumb to think that's a good move. Because it's like, yes, although you can get popularity and fame and whatever means through the negatives, like that, no. Yeah. Like, like, oh, so this podcast doesn't do so well. Should I go and say I support terrorist acts? No, that's not going to help. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Should I say questionable things about certain taboo mm. topics and be like, "Yeah, I'm I'm opposed to treating women like this," and do yeah. no, that's not going to happen. You know, simply put, it's not going to work out in the long run because at the end of the day, when that album does drop, the first thing people are going to say are "Crazy Man releases new album." Yeah, exactly. You know, and I can only imagine. Mega boy. Yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> The kinds of things that are going to be on said album, not mm. unless he's recorded it and he's like, man, I've had an epiphany. Oh, God. It's just, um, I think one of the things that got me so much, and I I laughed for a good, like, minute or so, was when it turned out he lost, like, nine million followers on Twitter ju- in, within, like, nine minutes. Yeah, because... Of this dumb stuff. And it's not even a matter of people not liking his opinion it's a matter of how he's going about presenting his opinion as some kind of fact or statement or such like a radical change that's come out of nowhere there's been like no progression it just feels like he's just decided it literally just feels like he said right screw everyone 
I'm a free thinker now. Free thinker, that's what all the dumb people say. I know. They're Everyone who has cl- ever said that is stupid. They're trying to class up their ideology up and mm. it doesn't work. It's not going to work and it's it's... It's stupid because Kanye's already had a rough couple years anyway. Mm. He's married to probably one of the worst women in the world. Yeah. And, you know, you've had two very underrated albums, lots of controversy regarding said albums, and obviously you're always under question. You were the form, former most popular rapper. I think that kind of goes to Drake and Kendrick. Whether you like those rappers or not, I yeah. think that's a fact. Um, so... If this is just a relevance thing, it's not working because at the end of the day, no one's going, man, can't wait to hear that new album. Everyone's going, what the hell happens? Yeah, I mean, uh, I actually kind of love that because we are going to be talking about relevance a bit more later. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, you hit it right on the head there. Mm. It, it's not great, but I kind of wanted to tune in on this just because everyone's kind of talking about it and I I, I don't know. It, it kind of... It kind of reminds me of the line, the very comedic line from JPEG Mafia's new album, mm. uh, Veteran, which I've had on repeat, as you already know, <laughs> where he kind of says, I will never go blonde like Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Which is something he actually did, but also yeah. you could interpret that as a metaphor for possibly being very, very stupid. Yeah. But yes, um, and one I thing, I think the last thing I want to talk about that happened this week was something you touched upon at the very end of the last podcast, yeah. and that was God of War. Yes. A.K.A. God of War 4. Mm. A.K.A. God of War 2018. A.K.A. Dad of War. A.K.A. God Boy. Of, God of Boar. God of Boar. A.K.A. Yeah. The Last of Us are taking too long to come out. Guys, do you have any filler? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> um, I've been looking at the game and um, it's, it's, it's fine. It, it's okay. It's competent. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm only really enjoying it because of the people who I'm watching playing it. And yeah. they are... Um, far more interesting personalities than said game. <laughs> there are some interesting elements to it. I mean, I like, I like the world serpent. I think that's cool. Oh uh, yeah, but that's in like literal Norse mythology. I know, so, but I, yeah. I still like the fact that it's yeah. there. Um, I like the first boss fight in the game. That okay. was cool. I don't think any other boss fight after that was particularly <laughs> interesting, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah. Um, there are some things I like. It. I like the fact that Kratos says "boy" every time. Oh God! It, it gets to the point where it feels like they're trying to make fun of it, and they do make fun of it at yeah. points. But it's not like a dad. You keep saying "boy." You know, my name is I feel Atreus. Like Atreus, you know, and it's like, and it, you know, and it's not the point of okay, I will stop calling you boy, yeah. and I will accept you as my child. You know, it doesn't happen. He, even towards the end of the last cutscene, he's like, "Boy, where are you going?" <laughs> boy, shoot the arrow. Boy. Well, I love that one of the control buttons is literally sun action. <laughs> it's like, that's the worst. That's a weird titling. Sun action. Oh. So you, that's how you father in video games. Oh, sun dude. action. Sun action. But I think the main thing I kind of wanted to touch upon was ever since the game, the game has come out, uh, IGN has really been promoting the hell oh. out of this game non-stop. Like... Their content for other games has like almost been mm. dwindled in comparison to this one. They are really milking this game for what it's worth, like big time. Like, I mean, if you, I mean, okay, it's great you like the game, yeah. But, like, calm down a little bit. And I kind of just seeing the feed of videos, I kind of wanted to write down some of the titles of these and kind of just uh. throw them out there. So you have God of War may change your mind on sidekicks. <laughs> Zero out of ten for that headline. Um, we have how photo mode works. Something like, <laughs> what? Something I don't didn't even know was in the game. I don't know if it's I don't know if that's fake or what, but I still found it quite funny. How how would you not know how photo mode works in any game? Like it's they're always presented. Here's photo mode done. I don't know. You have uh, check out one of God of War's prettiest areas. The most expensive area. I don't know what area that is. Um, ending explained. <laughs> like someone needs the ending explained for fucking god. I think of some war. people would. Um, <laughs> this is where we get. This is where it starts getting really bad. And when you start to start to kind of get really bad, eleven unforgettable moments in God of War. <laughs> oh. Because the game is already iconic. Um, what we think God of War two will be about? Are you shitting me? Yes, that is an actual title. Fucking hell. And the final one. This is the one that really got me. Bought a PS4 for God of War. Here's what to play next. 
No. Oh, those were all IGN. Yes. These are all IGN oh. videos. They were drunk. They have to be drunk. I don't know what they're like. This is a bit much. Like mm. they have given less coverage to Call of Duty. I know. Like this, I I don't know what's going on. I <laughs> like, and that's the thing. As much as people will say that, like journalists are paid off for the reviews and scores yeah. and that like and i kind of would like to at least think that at the end of the day that's not always the case yeah this has to be like a what prime example of something like this like it's definitely paid advertisement like at least like yeah i think they gave it like a 9.2 mm. and i know there's even one i just thought of with like uh the kind of podcast tv series thing yeah. they have up at noon where they were talking about how the um how the best reviewed games will fare in twenty years time, and they put God of War there, <laughs> and I was like in the thumbnail, God of War, yeah. Joel from Last of Us, the main character from Undertale, mm. and a few other characters, and I was like, Undertale will still fare good, the rest not so much. Undertale will last forever. I think there will be games that take from Undertale and manage to do what it tried a bit better, but Undertale will still be remembered well. I mean. Undertale was more iconic than God of War. Oh, yeah, definitely. Simply put, God like, of War will be forgotten. You only have to, like, the meme will die out. Yeah. People will still draw Toriel. Yeah. And make videos about how it, all this and that. Even yeah. if Toby Fox never makes another game again, he doesn't need to. He's like Snoop Dogg at this point. Yeah. He already has one of the most iconic games right now. He doesn't need to make another game ever again. Like, uh, th- there's this thing, like, the, the official games canon of what's, like, the best games, and... You get all your cliche stuff on there. You've got Ocarina of Time, Last of Us, Half-Life 2. God of War, the new one's probably going to be put on there. The actual canon list of good games has Undertale on there. Yeah. So, fuck that noise. And I don't care if you think... And I don't care if you don't think it's a good game or yeah. you're like, oh, the, the fan base is trash. Doesn't detach oh, from the fact... the fan base fa- is trash. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, the detach, still- doesn't detach from the fact that what that game stands for is significant. I mean, yeah. the Undertale was... You're going to see more references to Undertale and I've already even seen that in Pop Team Epic. Yeah. They yeah. made a reference to Undertale big time. Um, but yeah. Anything else that significantly <sighs> happened this fortnight that you want to talk about before we move on to our two main topics? This is just going to be more like a quick sentence, but the current anime season is going strong. Yes, it is. I'm watching like nine animes at the moment um, that are currently airing, and there's still two or three more that I haven't checked out yet. So I'm very shocked, very surprised, and very happy. It's a very strong year. Yeah, and I'm hoping it continues this well. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, given some of the other things that are coming up that I'm looking forward to, like... um uh, FLCL, yep. Gamer Girl, um, was it? Psychopass movies. Psychopass movies. Um, I think One Punch Man season two is gonna actually come out this okay. year. I think it will. Yeah. Um, I think end of year though. Yeah. And a few other things as well. Like definitely. Um, definitely we gotta we're gonna have to like you know it's literally the case of I can't hold all these animes right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. And there's even some I can't watch because I haven't watched the previous stuff yet. Like yeah, um, Steins Gates. Oh no, well, that's uh, for me. Uh, yeah, and um, what's the space one? The, the very famous space opera that's like a hundred episodes in anime. Um, yeah. Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Oh okay. They've got a twenty-four episode series out at the moment, and I can't watch that yet because <laughs> I haven't seen the original. It's like, god damn it! I mean, you can. I know, but <laughs> I, I want to watch the original first. Fair enough. So yeah, yeah, going very strong. Going in, going in. Expect um. I don't know, expect videos on those. Yeah. Because that's like the main it's like the main thing anyone wants to talk about right now. Especially <laughs> within our circle. Yeah. But yeah, now it's time to move on to our news and stories and topics and we got kind of a big one here. Mm-hmm. So um we got the uh only trailer we're talking about today. Yeah, the which only trailer, is a yeah. Bit odd, but um it's the trailer for um Sony's Venom. Mm. The uh kind of Spider Man homecoming spin off that is but isn't in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, starring uh, I was going to say Tom Holland, but that's um, <laughs> that's Spider Man, yeah, Tom <laughs> Hardy, uh, as uh, Eddie Brock being Venom, and I was actually interested through this trailer. Um, they actually showed Venom and he looked pretty good as far as he is, and Eddie Brock, well, Tom Hardy doing Eddie Brock, he's doing him in the way that he should have been done years back, the kind of arrogant but also pathetic. 
which I love. It's good for me. I mean, it was actually only like you who like you know kind of talked about the original teaser trailer yeah. on like the one you did on your own, and now yes, we see Venom in this trailer, and I mean. My feelings towards this film were like I was like really feeling this film except yeah. for like the bike scenes because that just looked dumb. Yeah, and it was very incredibly distracting when like the tall monster from Scooby Doo appeared and that kind of really took me out. <laughs> oh, but the tall monster's great. Like, I love him. I, I obviously I have some issues because I'm probably this film's biggest <laughs> like Detractor, enemy right now yeah. next to Deadpool two, which is clearly what's going to kill this film. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to like. Tom mm. Hardy is giving 110% in this film. Yeah. And compared to everyone else who look... Everyone just looks generic <laughs> and just so limp. Also, the lady saying symbiote, that hurt me inside. I know that's, that's going to be an issue. Yeah. Um, I mean, my, my main issue with this film is that it's really generic and really safe right now. Fair enough. And... Like, they're really not trying here. Yeah. Like, they really aren't. And, I mean, you can kind of tell how desperate Sony is for a hit. Like, this yeah. is this is, so, this is Sony literally on its last legs. Like, if this doesn't, if this doesn't, if this isn't a hit, mm. they might as well file for bankruptcy because they are, <laughs> they are done because they will have absolutely nothing. I mean... Oh, they still got their Black Cat Silver Sable team-up film planned. That ain't happening. <laughs> you think Marv was going to let that happen? I don't know. I, I mean, Get a few extra money. I think, and I think also with this character, I, I think they're kind of missing out on a golden opportunity here to kind of like really make a challenging film because, mm-hmm. I, I mean, although it kind of is leaning towards like a character study yeah. with Eddie, I think you need it to be more in the vein of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde or like The Exorcist Three, and I'm not really seeing that. It kind of just I seems. It was. I don't think it is with um like the uh, Venom symbiote and Eddie Brock almost. Batting, battling each other mentally. But we don't see that. Well, they they argue sense. at points. It's like very limp. It just seems yeah. like it's like, oh, you're the Venom now, I'm going to ride on the bike. And I'm just like... I think he's uh, driving away from the Life Foundation. I don't know what... I Like, that bike scene just completely I took know. me out of it because it's like... Because they show that a lot in the trailer and I'm like, is this the only action scene or something? It might be the, the middle action scene. The middle bit. It's yeah. the climax. Because, um... You don't see Venom until that scene at the very end, and then it goes, and then it says Venom. We are. Dun, dun. Yeah, like they, they're going to do a Spider Man 2, uh-huh. Amazing Spider Man 2. And um, Fantastic Four. I can see them actually doing that. Don't know. I mean, I will say with the Life Foundation, um, which is probably one of my favorite Venom kind of arcs, um, it does leave a nice set of minor villains that can work in this that don't need too much extra explanation because i mean so i'm happy with that I, I think the only and i think a lot of people are going to get really really angry with me saying this yeah. but the only actual interesting thing about this film is how it's going to end okay because marvel doesn't know what the hell to do with venom in the yeah. comics because he's doing everything uh yeah they did agent venom then they did didn't they do space venom i can't remember space venom space punisher no they did um venom taking over the universe venom anti-venom. being a hero venom being evil they've done everything with venom basically aren't they doing carnage being a hero at the moment or, yeah or something yeah. like that and i i i'm wondering whether marvel's just going to take control of this film and i'm wondering whether venom is going to be a hero at the end kind of like how the hero i'm um, sorry the trailer implies with the title anti hero mm. Or, at the same time, with the hashtag We Are Venom, is yeah. that going to be more of a... Are they going to lean towards more of an alien invasion, take over the universe in the Marvel Cinematic Universe thing? Because we already know Sony ain't going to have the rights to those characters for very long, and they're yeah. going to take that back, because as much as people don't want to admit it, this film isn't going anywhere, regardless of how much money it makes, because Marvel is going to go, you see how much money we made compared mm. to how much money you made? Give us that back now. Yeah. I am interested to see where it goes and between the studios. I'm interested to see where it's going to go and how laughable it can get. Because I have a feeling that this is going to be one of those cases where the only good thing that people say is Tom Hardy. Right. And everyone's going to go, everything else was just bad. I mean, I'll probably be seeing it like early ish because it's me. And that's fine. I'm going to stop you. (laughs) So I'll definitely talk about it. When uh, I can. I won't be seeing this film. Yeah. 
um, because see it tomorrow. You know, <laughs> not really. No, I I really don't know what to to honestly say about this film other than um, I know I know it's not going to be good because they're not trying. Okay. Because like really, this is the time in the in the given how comic book superhero movies are going. This is not the time to be playing it safe. And that is exactly what they are doing. They just have gone, we have this character we like, the money's already coming in. Okay. Yeah, the trailer has millions of views. It doesn't mean you ain't going to see that in profit. Yeah. Because it only takes one review to say this film is bad. And that's it. Although, con- considering how like the uh, audience and the critics don't seem to care about what each other are saying at the moment... I'd say critical consensus won't really matter to normal I mean, audience. If it, I mean, if it was a DC film, then yes. Because DC films are stupid to the point where they think that everyone is out to kill them. I mean, even when it comes to Marvel films, the audience don't care what critics say. Oh, I know they don't care. Yeah. They usually go around, you know, beat and burn people. I understand mm. that. Um, but uh, I don't really care. I mean, all I can really say is get a life if that's what you are about. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's just fiction at the end of the day and it doesn't matter. You think Sony or Marvel gives a damn about you? Hell no. Why do you think Black Panther came out? <laughs> just manipulation and money. That's all it is. Only one person won in Black Panther and that was Disney. And you gave them your money. They got the money. So only one person yeah. has egg on their face. <laughs> but um, that's just business. Uh, which is the theme of this podcast, apparently. <laughs> um, the next story we're going to talk about is uh, it's kind of like a self-explanatory story, and we would definitely recommend you kind of looking into the whole like saga that it was, and that was the photographer David Slater wins his legal battle over the notorious monkey selfie that he took and won a prize for. Now, the main reason this was even a legal battle in the first place, because essentially he went out, you know, was doing photography, I forget where, mm. and um, he left his kid out and this monkey took a photo of itself. Yeah. And um, he submitted that film, won an award. Obviously, it was a pretty funny image because the way yeah. it's done is a really nice photo of just him smiling because of yeah. all the things you could have captured. It was <laughs> one of those great things to which Peter decided they were going to take him to court over <sighs> the fact that he doesn't own the photo. The monkey does. Mm-hmm. Which, um, obviously, most common sensed people um, were like, no. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't, that doesn't that doesn't work. Uh, monkey don't have com- like copyright laws. <laughs> it's it's written for humans. That's- yeah, basically, and kind of as the court ruled, they said, um, uh, "I'm just trying to find the uh, exact quote, which I can't seem to find." Yeah, I can't seem to find it anyway, but basically, as it says in the article somewhere, they basically summarise that, yes, monkeys cannot file copyright claims, so the photo belongs to you. Yep. And um, I do like this kind of, to use some HOHE production, I do like this slam dunk (laughs) that uh, Congress um, put it towards PETA, everyone's most hated um, company that... um, Oh, sorry for that quick cut, guys. Things are kind of going a bit nuts in the house, but... um, Ace, if you kind of, like, read what the essential statement was regarding <laughs> towards Peter. Certainly. Um, Peter appears to have failed to live up to the title of friend. In the wake of Peter's proposed dismissal, Naruto is left without an advocate. His supposed friend, having abandoned Naruto's substantive... I always fail at that word. Sus- substantive. There we are. Substantive claims in what appears to be an effort to prevent the publication of a decision adverse to Peter's institutional interests. Where, uh, were he capable of recognising this abandonment, we wonder whether Nur- uh, Naruto might initiate an action for breach of confidential relationship against his former next friend, Peter, for its failure to pursue his interests before its own. Puzzlingly, while representing to the world that animals are not ours to eat, where experiment on use for entertainment or abuse in any other way, Peter seems to employ Naruto as an unwitting pawn in its ideological goals. Burn. Massive burn. Shots fired. He is dead, six foot under. Like, 360 no scope. Yeah, exactly. And I think that is um, exactly summing up Peter. Yeah. Big time, because... They're all flash in the pan, no substance. You know, targeting people who don't need to be targeted, and, like, this is just, like, a complete stupid mess that, like, didn't need to go there. They didn't need to go there. And I think it... The arrogance always bothers me. I know. Where they... You know, that's the thing. I mean, the problem is... What Peter should be doing and sometimes does is great. It's mm. a great effort, but they're just wasting time and money on like this stupidness where it doesn't even matter. And I think the depictions that other people, including South Park, have made of them, unfortunately do come true, where they're just a bunch of assholes who will beat you up at the mere thought of you even looking at an animal. Yeah, didn't Simpsons do something similar or 
Kind of, but yeah. I, I think South Park's one had a bit of a, um, yeah. well, unfortunately becoming realistic <laughs> yeah. approach. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that's like the main story. You can look onto some of the, uh, I think the article itself does link back to previous um, uh, information regarding it, which would be in the download link and the description. But now we're on to our discussion, which we haven't had for a good while. But I think this is quite an interesting one because it has quite the shocking title, and that is The End of Single Player Games. Dun, dun, dun. And that is mainly coming from the point, because I kind of read a nice little discussion regarding it. And with the rumoured news that the next instalment of the Call of Duty series, being Black Ops 4, might be dropping its single-player like campaign in favour of a more battle royale, multiplayer kind of lean, a lot of people have been asking the question as to whether single-player games are going to actually die out. So... We thought on this episode we kind of weigh in on this discussion soon as it is one that could threaten the very balance of gaming as it stands. And I think I really kind of wanted to know your guys' like thoughts on this more coming from a kind of more current yeah. uh, state in gaming. I do play games, of course, but they aren't necessarily where some of the modern games come from. So I think it's definitely going to be us tuning in on our kind of like experiences or kind of thoughts on said situation. And uh, seeing as I've definitely had a lot of experience with Call of Duty, mm -hmm. I played it quite a bit in college because you get drunk in college mm -hmm. and friends played it a lot, so you joined in. Couldn't couldn't get you off the Call of Duty. I know. Peer pressure, man. Mm -hmm. it, it got me. So um, I think one of the interesting things to say is it's not just the Battle Royale format mm -hmm. that has people scared. The other thing is that Call of Duty is apparently going to a multiplayer more similar to uh, Overwatch in yeah. which it's got hero characters rather than your customised creator character kind of thing, which um, that isn't. it's not the first time that's happened in Call of Duty, though. No. Uh, it actually happened in Black Ops 3, which is the same developer doing Black Ops 4, being um, Treyarch, yeah. as opposed to Sledgehammer and Infinity Ward, who make the other ones each, you know, three years. They take turns. Yeah. So um, the fact that they'd have hero characters isn't anything unusual. And it seems that from the rumours, they've even backpedalled a bit to make it more like Black Ops 3's multiplayer, hmm. where they still have kill zone, like um, kill streaks, etc. However, when it comes to the battle royale mode, I'm honestly not surprised that they're doing this. No, I, I'm not. Just to kind of catch everyone on like a little bit of the headspace. I mean, the Rise of Battle Royale games has been rather interesting in the last. Yep five years or so starting although I know people are going to say other games but let's just say starting with Overwatch yeah. a um, arguably the most popular and already iconic I mean, staple of video games right now I wouldn't even cl like say that is a battle royale really that's more just a action shooter in but a, I think or it's a hero actually shooter. regarded as that weird although okay. it may not be yeah. that but I'm just kind of using an example because yeah. it seems to be the template for what mm. other people are trying to jump on said trend and I think the main reason it is popular is because of his creative character designs and effort yeah. to actually be something different despite not really being that much different apart from its character designs you also have failures like Battleborn and mm. Lawbreakers, Lawbreakers which for the life of me I couldn't figure out what Lawbreakers was called uh yeah that was um, the Cliff B game. Yes. Um, I, I couldn't find out games that essentially failed to launch with audiences because mm. um, they were too similar to Overwatch and themselves yeah. and because the market had ironically already become oversaturated with a game that had already done it better than both yeah. of those. It was literally the case of just being the first to the punch, simply put. Which uh, even then, Team Fortress 2 did that like 10 years time, before. Yes, Counter-Strike. Yeah. Of course, I'm just kind of trying yeah, to set a precedent recent, for yeah. where this is essentially coming from. And then also you have things, more recent hits, like Unknowns... Uh, Player Unknowns Player Battleground. Unknowns Battleground, probably one of the dumbest video game yeah. titles in the last three years. And Fortnite, which yeah. are games that it seems that everyone is playing. And Cliffy B's failed one, which the name I can't even remember. <laughs> he had another one? Yeah, uh, he did one yeah, more like um, Battlegrounds and Fortnite. Which failed hard. Well, if I ain't heard of it, you know you failed. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I kind of understand why Call of Duty would be more inclined to, you know, kind of go towards this like um, battle royale leaning for the most part. But will it pay off? I'm not sure because although you've mentioned the fact that they have had like character, you know, base yeah. stats and stuff like that, 
when you think of Call of Duty, you don't think of character, and that's something mm-hmm. that I don't think they're going to be able to implement. There's not going to be anything in this Call of Duty game that's going to stand out next to the style and the difference of something like Fortnite or Overwatch, which yeah. is clearly a defined game. When you put something with Call of Duty and you try and add whatever crazy characters or whatever this or that, people are going to say rip off. Yeah. Simply put. And- even if you are looking at, let's say, the realistic character shooter, yeah, then you already have Rainbow Six Siege, yeah, which is phenomenally better, going strong, still. exactly. And they, I think, they're still adding more characters, which is crazy. Or you could throw in Far Cry Five, yeah, as well, something that is very character driven, not just in actual playable and talkable characters, but just in world itself. Yeah. A massive map in which you can talk to all these supposed crazy people. Mm. Um, and uh, you know Dying Light, the uh, yes. first person zombie game that came out yeah. um, years back? They actually added a Battle Royale mode to that recently mm. as an expansion. That's like five years the yeah. game's been out or something. Yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. And I mean, the way they're kind of going about it with the kind of, you know, screw the single player yeah. if we're going on what the rumours yeah. are saying and if they are true screw the single player we're going to focus on what's hot right now mm-hmm. you've already lost yeah because like I've already said just given the examples you said the market is oversaturated mm-hmm. you, I understand you're just going from the brand appeal you yeah. think that anything with Call of Duty will sell granted it still might because millions possibly yeah. even billions of people will play it because that's what they've been uh, institutionalized to mm-hmm. do every year but um you might as well have just made a new game it's not as if activision has like so many other companies and resources and money to make a new <laughs> ip i mean come on now i mean That'd they're a very crazy. they're a very small studio yeah. guys you've got to give them time to make these kinds of things although this is why i'm not surprised they're doing a whole battle royale and getting rid of single player no i mean yeah. even if this is still a rumor i think yeah. it is going to come down as being fact <laughs> Yeah, because um, for one, most people say, who cares about single-player and Call of Duty? Just in general, everyone just plays a multiplayer. Mm-hmm. The only person who's interested in single-player is me, because I find it fascinating what they're giving to the mainstream appeal. Especially Black Ops 3, now that, or was yeah. it Advanced Warfare, now that Kevin Spacey's in it? Oh, that was... um, was One it? of them. I'm trying to remember which one. It was like, I think it was Advanced Warfare. It was the one no one cared about. Yeah, I definitely think it was Advanced Warfare. Mm. Or, yeah. But um, it's it's fascinating seeing what they push in front of people as their narrative. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't take it as meaning anything when no. everything has meaning. And I mean, it's kind of sad as well yeah. because like a part of the research team actually does do research on advancing yeah. technology and actual modern warfare exactly. and they're kind of like hey man this is stuff we probably could see in like the next few years. Granted, we shouldn't have that kind of stuff because Hopefully. we shouldn't really be in yes. war with needless people but um hey, it's fiction whatever yeah but um yeah it is kind of sad that i and i don't think that the team or activision whoever's higher up really even cares or knows that no one actually cares about said detail that goes into yeah a game and i think it is kind of sad because even if they are going to put in all this effort no one's going to care mm-hmm. you could make whatever characters get whatever voice actors make whatever kind of live action trailer paying off whatever stars you want they're not going to care your fans don't care about that and they're not interested granted they might not even notice that the game doesn't have a single player or yeah. is even a battle royale because guess what that's the norm yep. and it's nothing new and uh, just the fascinating thing is they're chasing the battle royale all the new stuff the more overwatch stuff because they aren't doing that well sales no, wise. Not. No. Um I mean the best sales for Call of Duty was around 10 like 2010 2011 mm-hmm. when with Black Ops and Modern Warfare 3 that was their best selling stuff. Mm-hmm. Their most recent game um World War 2 sold 12.19 million compared to Modern Warfare 3 which sold 30.7 million. Mm. There's a big drop there. Big time, because it's old. You can't keep doing the same thing. It's the method to madness, to some extent. And it's just that that's the thing. They're no longer the things that people are chasing for money. They're now chasing others for money. And that's just when you know that you're no longer relevant. Exactly. And it does, does of course, come down to relevancy. And I also partly think that, um, or having a sneaky suspicion, this is another way to revolutionize and kind of get microtransactions back in there so they can make up for losses. Because um, although a lot of these games do have microtransactions, certain some of the games really don't force you to do it for the most Mm -hmm. part. I know Fortnite is heavy in that. 
Overwatch being one of the least heavy ones where they're just Got kind of like horrible loot crates. Oh, loot crates yeah. is garbage, but at the end of the day, I think you can still get by. Like it's yeah. you don't need them. There's but... no there's no real push yeah. to aesthetics as opposed to Fortnite where it's like oh this will greatly give you the advantage yeah. in that sense. So I would you know loot boxes are garbage, but at the same time. You can ignore all of that and yeah. still enjoy the game as opposed to other games that I know would call it duty. It's definitely going to be cosmetics for your character mm. costing this much pounds, better guns, obviously, because that's 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 really where one side of gaming is really trying to push because they're like, we need to make up for losses. Games don't sell as well because we spend too much money on them and they don't make a profit. Yep. So if we can nickel and dime people and get them literally on a drip. Yep. We should hopefully be able to make up for losses instead of, you know, making smaller games and new games and taking set charge instead of waiting around for the next big thing. Which is exactly where the whole games as a platform came out, which was the dumbest thing anyone's ever said. Mm. Games aren't platforms, they're the games. The yeah. platform is the platform. Yeah, I mean, if you look at things like Destiny, which is probably one of the most barren games I've ever <sighs> seen in my life. Just shoot and walk, shoot and walk. Like... It doesn't I mean, even have the style of Borderlands. I mean, it, the thing is, I, I honestly, I think we should kind of like say this is not going to be the end of single player games. No, <laughs> big time. Just I, in case you couldn't already figure that out. <laughs> whoever put that as the thing thinks that Call of I Duty. I put that as the title, but oh, I'm you, being sarcastic. I thought it was the headline people. Like, no, I, I mean okay. maybe someone would have said that, but I Oof. think anyone who has said that, okay. I know, has said it in a joking, discussion-based okay. way. I don't think anyone is actually okay. saying. I put that there yeah. just for interest because it's. It's not the the end of single player games. No. Single player, I mean, would God of War have done so well? Exactly. If, you know, they tried multiplayer with yeah. the God of War this God oh, of War God. series, and that didn't work out. Ascension. Did it? I forgot about that. That was garbage. That was trash. Oh. So yeah, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of people have made the point that God of War has done very well, and it is a game that just gives you the single player. Yeah. Nothing else, which I do give the game some props for that. I do yeah. give, and I do give Sony props for just being like, yeah, we really support single player games. Granted, they're stupid with the beta stuff, but um, yeah, it's not going anywhere anytime soon because guess what? People really like stories in games, whether they're good stories or not. Yeah. I mean, Cage. Do you um, remember when Last of Us added a multiplayer and it was so antithetical to the actual narrative that it was yeah, stupid? That, 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 I played that multiplayer for the achievement and then threw it in the bin. Oh, it was so bad. And I think Spec Ops did the exact same thing. Again, completely antithetical to the point of the game. Mm. And they include it. Fucking yeah. idiots. I mean, it's just coming, kind of going to the sense of, like you said earlier, Call of Duty is just chasing that fad mm. and you know fads come as easy as they go and I think what in five years time f- probably something stupid that's trying to oh, that's God. popular or whatever and I mean because everyone's after or waiting for that you know that, that next big thing and yeah. then it's all jump ship for the most part um, and I think this is what it is because it's not going to work out for them in the long run because mm-hmm. like I said the market's already oversaturated and we've got what six games yeah. You only really need one. And pe- all people seem to care about is Fortnite or like play or Unknown's Battlegrounds when it's a you know battle royale game. Yeah. That's the only one hero shooter you got Overwatch and it's yeah. basically anyone any like anything anyone talks about. Basically, so there's there's no real room yeah. for them. They might as well stick to being the generic shooter until they yeah. go out. And even then you have better game. I mean, Borderlands 3 is coming up very soon, so mm-hmm. no. <laughs> By Destiny. De- Destiny. I, even meant- I know we've already talked about it, but Destiny is like one of the worst things ever. Like, if you want to, if you instead of pointing fingers at like people like, I mean, yes, do point fingers at like the heads of certain companies mm. that are malicious. But I would say point more fingers at Destiny because everything that, that game is about is what will and could kill the video game industry. Mm. If you want to bitch and moan about how things aren't as great as they used to be, you need to make more discussions about Destiny and stop playing it. Yeah. Because that game is only out to screw you over and the industry. Here's the alternative to Destiny. You got the Borderlands games, you got Warframe. There you go, you're done. You're done. That's all you need. <laughs> That's all you need. Anything else to add to this discussion? Although I've, we pretty much uh, reassured everyone and nailed it on the head. Uh, I think we have. I uh, just want to say that um, I'm going to have some nice single player games to play when I get home, including Jet Set Radio, God Hand, Persona 3. So those are some good games right there. Exactly. Um, but you can continue playing Fortnite and PUBG if you want. I don't care. Come on, I don't care. I don't need my online subscription for these games. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> wanted to add like a kind of oh burn right there, but no worries. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much brings us to the end of the podcast. Before we do so, we have the video of the episode, which is going to be extreme meme music mega mashup two. Oh boy! Now the person who made the obviously the first one is the same person who made this one. So if you want to watch that one, you can. It's on their channel. But this one was a surprise because I mean. You read the title, you should kind of know what you're going to get. Most of the time, this compilation of songs is not going to work because sometimes songs that are considered memes aren't very good. Mm -hmm. And when you're just putting together songs that are just known through notoriety, yeah, they're not always going to go together. Although the last bit, the end, when you hear Linkin Park, that's <laughs> when it's actually good. Mm -hmm. The rest of it's kind of like trashy, but that might be the point of it. But yeah. The whole mix of, yeah, from uh, Linkin Park to um, My Chemical Romance to the Shooting Star song, oh, <laughs> or whatever it's it. called. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the best part, if yeah. you want to just skip to that, which is at about the six minute mark. So you can do so, um, and also manage to sneak in that rap song in. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't think there's any rap in that. I don't think there is, actually. Hmm. I don't think there are any rap songs of notoriety okay. in there. But, uh, oh, well. Um, I already know I have the video of the episode already uh, ready for the next podcast. And it <laughs> is going to be a rap song. Of course, it's been too long. You're no. going cold turkey. It's actually not. But um, <laughs> anything else you want to add to this podcast before we wrap it up? Uh, I, I think that's it. Um, yeah, uh, play uh, Battletech. Play Into the Breach. They're good games and they're made by good kids. The kids are all right. Exactly. Um, I don't have anything to add other than um, hopefully we'll be looking to bring back the, the film reviews to the channel. Yeah. Very, very soon. So look forward to that. And also check out my Japan video. Definitely. It's two hours definitely. long. But Set some time aside. Make some popcorn. Yeah. Enjoy. There is, um, is going to be a smaller video going up on that channel for those of you who don't want to watch two hours of that, <laughs> which is understandable. So look forward to that and subscribe to the channel because that would be really awesome. Definitely. If, uh, to get YouTube to actually start noticing my channel because I've noticed this current channel, Angry Raccoon 1, is glitching out, mm -hmm. which is which is not fun. But you'll be able to find the link to that and everything else in the description and the download link if you want to message us about everything, if you want to weigh in on our discussion uh, regarding the end of single-player games, although it's not going to happen, you can do so at raccoonplusfriends.gmo.com if you also want to tell us things and that um ace where can people find you if they want to continue this if they really agree with you on venom and they yep. want to say man i'm I really really digging venom fuck the angry <laughs> raccoon he don't know what he's talking about where can they find you and have such discussion uh, you can uh find me on twitter at the ace enigma ace is uh, capitalized and enigma is also capitalized and if you think I'm wrong about Devil Man Cry Baby, you can find me <laughs> <laughs> at theangryraccoon.com. Only one C in the raccoon on Twitter. And yeah, I guess we'll leave it at that. Unless there's anything else to say. I'm just going to continuously send you Devil Man Cry Baby pics now. Don't. Because I've seen way too many. <laughs> I've seen way too many. But if that's all, I will end this podcast like I always do by saying I am the Angry Raccoon. I am Ace. And we'll see you in the next podcast.